Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing super super duper well. And today my friends, I am going to be going over the signs and symptoms that I experienced in my two week wait, two week wait, it's actually like not two weeks, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> After our second embryo transfer that ultimately led to our positive pregnancy test. If you are new here and just stumbling across this video, hello, my name is Mac Dingle. My husband and I were on a three year infertility journey before we ever experienced our first and only positive pregnancy test, although I did take like 10 of them when we did experience it. And in that three years, it included three IUIs, two rounds of IVF, a failed embryo transfer, and then our second successful embryo transfer. And we vlogged all of it extensively, so I will leave that playlist linked down below in case you are currently in the thick of it and any of those vlogs would be useful for you. Now this video might be titled something like how I knew I was pregnant after our embryo transfer, but if you know anything or have experienced anything having to do with IVF or infertility in general, let's all be honest, there is no way that I would have known that I was pregnant. <laughs> but I did jot down any symptoms that I felt I would like to make sure that I noted just in case there was a positive pregnancy test at the end of this. I feel like symptom spotting is very difficult to avoid when you have worked so hard to get to an embryo transfer. And so many symptoms can mean so many different things, whether it's leading to a positive pregnancy test or leading to heartbreak. So it's really frustrating <laughs> when you're in the process and you just want definitive symptoms that every woman experiences. But with that, I just want you to keep in mind that there are definitely some symptoms that I'm glad I noted because they were very different from my first failed embryo transfer. But as we know, every single woman and every single body, literally physical body is so different. I have seen so many videos of women that thought that their transfer completely failed because they felt nothing. They literally felt no symptoms whatsoever. And then it led to their positive pregnancy test and ultimately led to their healthy baby. So while these videos are fun and I can't wait to share what I experienced with you, I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind. I have not looked at this in forever. So this is is so fun. I have a note in my phone that says two week wait. And the first thing that I have on there says leading up to transfer. So I wanted to note the things that I felt leading up to transfer when I was on the pyo shots and the estrogen so that I could keep those symptoms in mind throughout the like five day wait or whatever we were doing to see if there was anything different beyond the symptoms I was already experiencing, you know? But the days leading up to transfer, I definitely started getting mild cramps occasionally, mostly when I moved suddenly. So if I was on the couch for a while and then I got up to go to the bathroom, I would feel a mild cramp upon moving after I haven't moved in a while. But I did note that these cramps leading up to the transfer were definitely less often and just less intense than I remember from the first transfer. I remember from the first transfer, it was almost like every single time I stood up or every single time I moved after not really moving for a while, it was always followed by cramping, like no matter what. And so I definitely noted that this time it was less than I remember the first time. The other thing to note with that is that this transfer, I was only on estrogen for two full weeks before starting PIO, whereas the first transfer, I was on it for three full weeks before starting PIO. So I don't know if that had anything to do with that symptom. So Monday was our transfer and I noted that I had no pain from the transfer, just kind of a sensation, but less than last transfer. So that was interesting. And then I grouped Tuesday and Wednesday together. So one day and two day past embryo transfer. I noted that I had mild cramping, but not more than before the transfer. So the same type of cramping that I was experiencing before transfer, I was experiencing a couple days after as well. I noted that it was still less than last transfer. And I also started to notice slightly tender breasts, but I note that it was so slight, I can't tell if it's in my head or if it could be the medication. But this was a big one for me because I remember looking out for tender breasts from the first transfer and I never experienced that at all. So when I started to feel that they were feeling a little more tender than usual, I kind of got a little excited, but I definitely wanted to like wait to see if they got any more tender or if it was just in my head. <laughs> Moving on to Thursday, which was three days past my embryo transfer, I was still experiencing everything from Wednesday, but I started feeling a slight pinching on the right 
its lower abdomen. And I only noticed this two times throughout the day. This was also something that I did not experience at all during my first transfer. So that and the potentially tender breasts were two very different things that I didn't experience before and I was now experiencing with my second transfer. I never experienced implantation bleeding, but the pulling or pinching sensation was so unmistakable. It was not a cramp and it was not something that I was like, am I feeling something, am I not? Like it was a distinct, pinching feeling and I remember pointing very specifically to the part that I was experiencing it to my husband and we're still to this day on ultrasounds trying to figure out like where baby implanted or where the placenta was like taking place or whatever because I swear looking back that was the embryo burrowing into my uterine lining which is so freaking cool. <laughs> Moving on to Friday which was four days past transfer I noted that my boobs were definitely tender not super Super tender or sore but still definitely noticeable I knew that at this point it wasn't in my head and my breasts were becoming much more tender I noted that I still had mild cramping but not more than the previous days and there were no slight pinches on Friday I never experienced more pinches after that third day after transfer. On Saturday, so five days past transfer, I noted that my breasts were more tender, noticeably more swollen and soft. The size was different, the feeling of them were different, and they looked different. Like something was definitely going on. Part of me was like, this could be the medication, but since I've been on that medication for like two to three weeks at that point, up to this point, Pio definitely one to two weeks, and then estrogen, it was like two to four weeks at this point and then all of a sudden my boobs were changing it was definitely something I wanted to note and it was happening only on the days after transfer I noted that the cramping continued but it never got more intense and then at night I noted that I was slightly nauseous but I also noted that that day I went to the movies and I had butter popcorn and that usually doesn't make me feel that great but I definitely had just a wave of nausea before going to bed that night the next day on Sunday so six days passed. I said my breasts continued to be slightly more tender. They continued getting more and more tender as the days passed. And that morning I woke up slightly nauseous as well, but it didn't last very long. So that night I had a wave of nausea. And then when I woke up in the morning, I also had a wave of nausea. And then circling back to the next Monday, so seven days past embryo transfer, I noted a tad bit more noticeable cramping that day. And I noted that I had a long cramp in the same pinching spot that I had had when I felt that pinching. And it actually had me stop in my tracks. It was a little more intense, so it definitely scared me because during my first transfer, like I said, I definitely had more noticeable cramps when I would get up after sitting for a while or after I hadn't moved for a while. And so to experience a more intense cramp when I hadn't really experienced those this time, it definitely scared me and like put a lot of doubt in my head. But after looking at all of the other symptoms that I had written down, I definitely felt like it was just overall different for all of the reasons that I listed. So those were the physical symptoms that I was experiencing this time. If you have absolutely any questions about those physical symptoms or you wanna leave your own physical symptoms that you felt leading up to your positive test, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them over. And I'm sure if somebody else is in their two week wait and they're wondering what other people's symptoms were, they would like to read those as well. But if you are somebody that also believes in experiences signs leading up to something big or when you're in some sort of waiting period there were so many unbelievably unmistakable signs that sent chills down both mine and my husband's spine whenever we saw them it got to the point where we would see a sign and we'd be like okay we get it the first was that I started seeing 444 everywhere and that is not a number that I typically see on repeat. Some people have that as their angel number and I wouldn't say or constitute that as mine. I don't see it on license plates, I don't see it on the clock very often, but all of a sudden I just started seeing it everywhere and I didn't even know what it meant. So when I looked up what it means, it says, in numerology this number is a clear indication from the angels that what you have been preparing for in your life is going to happen and 
end soon. They are trying to make it clear to you that what you've been working toward and praying for is just around the corner. And I had seen it so often at this point that that definitely gave me chills. Like I would see it on the mileage on our car. I would see it on the clock. I would see people wearing necklaces that literally have 444 on them. It was just, I started seeing it so often that I was like, okay, I get it. Now, what does this mean? You know? Now I mentioned that 444 is not necessarily the number that I would constitute as my angel number because the number that shows up in my life all the time during difficult times, during times of waiting, during times of hope is actually a weird number. It's 1042 and that number is very special to Jack and I and it goes back to when we first started dating and since then it has just shown up everywhere again during times where we really need to see it and we're really looking for peace and hope. So I noticed that leading up to our transfer and when we were in the waiting period after our transfer I would see it occasionally but the kicker, the the most like I still can't get over this to this day. I have a picture of it in my notes so I never ever forget it but when we were in the transfer room and when the transfer had been completed before I even sat up to get up to go to the bathroom I looked over at this clock that they have in the operating room that we do the transfers in and the clock literally read 10:42. At the exact time our transfer was completed, it was 10:42. And even on the video that I took of our transfer, my doctor kind of replays it back for us to grab on our phone to have. It was all within that same minute, seeing that it was 10:42 and then when I took the video, the timestamp of that video is 10:42 in my phone. And I remember looking over and saying to Jack, "Look at the time. That's so crazy." And my doctor was like, "Is 10:42 a special number for you all. And we were like, yeah, it's a really special number. And he just goes, take a picture, take a picture. So we made sure to take a picture and the whole moment was just like, what? This is crazy. The next sign you guys already know about if you watched our transfer vlog, but a very special sweatshirt that I was waiting for in the mail ended up unexpectedly coming the morning of transfer. And that sweatshirt was specifically ordered in relation to our journey so far. And so for it to come come on the morning before transfer when the mail usually doesn't come at that time anyway, like ever. It was just a very strange occurrence for me. And then the very last sign, I forget when exactly this occurred, but it was definitely either the day of transfer or just within the waiting period. But Jack and I, of course, were talking about signs, symptoms, like what would happen if it was positive? Do we think it's gonna be positive, etc. And right at that moment, we pulled up behind a car on the highway and the license plate was JJ and Bun. And if you don't know, I go by Mac because my name is June McKenzie and I've always gone by my middle name, but our legal names are John and June. And so to see JJ and Bun, we took it as bun in the oven, it's happening. And it was just a very strange and very specific choice of letters. And for us to pull behind that car at that moment, it was very strange. We both looked at each other and I think this was the sign where we were like, okay, we get it, it might happen. It might happen for us this time. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you have absolutely any questions about my experience that I may not have covered in this video, please leave it in the comments below. And if you're new and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure to do so down below because I upload videos like these at least once a week, hopefully going back to twice a week as I start getting this energy back that the first trimester stole from me. All of my socials are linked down below. Make sure to go follow those. I love you all so, so, so much and I will catch you in the next video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!